update. My boyfriend saved my friend and now she fancies him. Original post. At a Halloween party earlier this year, someone tried to force himself and my 24 female friend while she, 22 female, was blackout drunk and my boyfriend, 23 male, caught the guy in the act and stopped him. He got his mom to come get her and carried her to the car. His mom took her to his house and she stayed in his room while he stayed out of the friends. He then drove her home in the morning. My friend was heavily impacted by that. It hasn't come out in a while, understandably, but we've met her a few times to hang out and such. But since then, she has messaged my boyfriend just trying to chat almost every day. My boyfriend usually replies maybe once every three days. He's a notoriously bad texter. This did sort of bother me at first, but I thought, you know, maybe talking to him is comforting to her after what happened, so I pretty much ignored it and didn't let it bother me. This is until yesterday. On Boxing Day, my friend group had a get-together at my friend's flat. We had some drinks, played party games, and did a secret Santa. We agreed a 100-pound limit on secret Santa. A friend got my boyfriend and got him a 380-pound Balenciaga hoodie. We were all like WTF, but she said it was just to say thank you. For the rest of the party, it felt like she wouldn't leave aside too. Again, I let this slide until towards the end of the night. Another friend of ours pulled me to the side and told me that my friend had confided in her that she fancied my boyfriend and had done so since the incident. Now, I really don't know what to do. My friend went through something horrific and my boyfriend saved her. But now I don't know how to reinforce boundaries in my relationship. Or if I even should. Now for the top advice before reading the update. A few things. First, good on your boyfriend and his mom. Proper heroes. You can't control your friend's feelings here. Likely, she can't control them. Infatuations are like that. And has given her a doozy for a reason to be infatuated. Your boyfriend needs to be clear that while they can be friends slash confidence, he's with you. Romance is off the table and big gifts make him uncomfortable. The bigger issue is beyond your ability to fix. She really needs to get some therapy to help manage the trauma and the resulting feelings. But coming from you, she could see it as jealousy and react poorly. This might be a job for mutual friends to try to coax her into therapy. Hopefully, receiving help from a therapist will make her more receptive to rebuilding boundaries. Yes, I am very proud of him. My issue is that my friend has only recently started coming out again. It only ever comes out if my boyfriend is going to be there. I worry that by saying something, it will put her in a position where she will shut herself off, which is the last thing she probably needs. Really, at this point, your boyfriend needs to politely set some boundaries. Don't take crazy expensive gifts. Stick close to you while she's around, keep you wrapped into conversation, things like that. If she gets touchy, he can simply say he isn't comfortable with that since he's in a relationship. I understand. It's a complicated situation, with a ton of potential pitfalls wherein someone can be hurt. Above all else, your friend needs therapy. Right now, she's forming unhealthy attachments. It's all very understandable, but it's unhealthy and it's causing problems for you slash boyfriend. I worry that you're right. If it comes from you, she may react even more poorly. Maybe boyfriend can nudge her to therapy? Maybe mutual friends, but someone has to. In the meantime, you, or probably your boyfriend, will have to try to reestablish boundaries in a gentle way. Talk to him and try to work out an approach. Maybe you shouldn't spend time with her unless you're around, a gentle reminder for her. But again, she needs therapy. You and boyfriend might talk to a therapist too. I'm not suggesting you need it, although I view it as an overall positive. But a therapist could help you find a way forward that both helps your relationship, it helps your mental health, I don't know. Do you have any ideas of how to go about getting my friends on site to convince her to get therapy? I don't want to feel like I'm pushing into her boundaries or try and tell her how to heal. But at the same time, I can't do nothing because it will lead to me resenting her. Your friend needs therapy. It's not weird that she fell for your boyfriend in that situation. We're kind of programmed to get attached to people who help us when we're in danger. However, she's trying to make moves on your boyfriend and that's morally not okay. But what you should do about it is tell your boyfriend this information and how it makes you feel. You should be able to trust your boyfriend to shut her advances down, but be honest with him about how you feel. Talk it out. You can also talk it out with a friend in question. Don't attack her. 
show her sympathy for her situation and try to urge her to see a therapist. While understandable, it's not healthy for her to pursue a taken man. Yeah, I haven't even told him yet. But I don't want to make him feel awkward or anything, as I wouldn't want what's happening now to affect any decisions he'd made in the future. And now for the update. So following the advice of the majority of responses, I told my boyfriend and we agreed he should sit her down and talk to her. He invited her out to Starbucks to talk about how she feels, but now I fear the situation is worse. My boyfriend told her gently that he understands how she feels and is grateful, but he doesn't feel the same. He also told her that her emotional response to him is just trauma bonding. She refuted this by claiming that she had feelings for him long before the incident, back when they first met, but never acted on them. That she only said that her feelings came after the incident so that people won't judge her, slash hate her. My boyfriend told her that he wasn't interested regardless, and she said that's fine. But her feelings are real, and she has a right to speak her truth. When I tried to talk to her, she didn't even apologize, and said that she won't feel guilty for something outside of her control. I feel totally lost, because now this feels like so much more of a betrayal than before. Any help would be appreciated at this point. I just feel sick. Added to Ed. She also admitted that she didn't originally even get his name in Secret Santa, that she found out someone else had it and asked the swap so she would be buying his gift. She knows exactly what she's doing, and you shouldn't consider her as a friend anymore. Honestly, she's being very immature by continuously confessing to your boyfriend when it's clearly stated that he's not interested multiple times. It seems like she has no respect for you nor your relationship. I don't recommend you or your boyfriend to continue to contact her anymore to save future headaches. To be fair, this was all in one conversation, so she just basically confessed how she felt. It hasn't tried to talk to him since as far as I know. Although she's right, her feelings aren't in her control. Her actions are. By actively pursuing your boyfriend knowing you're together, she is way out of line. At this point, as much as it may hurt, I would cut her off. The fact she couldn't even apologize is proof that she has no remorse or guilt for what she's doing. Not worth the headache, Opie. No way. I just can't believe she would be so remorseless to someone she's had a seven-year friendship with. I'm just speechless. I don't even know what to say to her. Listen, I had a derby wife friend I thought was really cool. Met her in a roller derby. We hit it off. Some years later, she was my maid of honor when my husband and I finally got married. A year later, my husband and I buy our own car into a rally, and thus we had an extra seat in our own vehicles for the rally. I took my derby wife friend slash maid of honor, and my husband took his college buddy slash best man. Long story short, seven years of thinking I knew this woman, only to find a completely different and really effing creepy side of her that I was just like, wow, wow. At my age, early 50s female, it is difficult to find people to become friends with. And I don't have many friends. So letting go of your relationship is not an easy task for me. After that crap show for a week during the rally and we had dropped them off at the airport for them to go home, I had a two-week drive back home where I had a lot of time and space to just think. And that's going to be my suggestion to you. Take some space and look back over your relationship with this woman. Once you have some space from her, and truly reflect on her actions... I bet you'll find some red flags there with regarding your relationship with her. It wasn't until I truly had time to reflect on that witch that I realized what a horribly toxic woman she was, and there was zero chance I was going to allow that toxicity in my life. When I got back home, I wrote her a letter telling her if she valued our friendship. I knew she wouldn't do as requested though. She would apologize and remove herself from a group. Of course she didn't. I blocked her and had her removed. My long-winded point is this. I suspect if you take an honest look at this woman and your relationship with her, you'll find some serious red flags. Her finally being open and pursuing your boyfriend is just a neon flag she's willing to plant for her own selfish means. If she was truly a friend, she'd keep her truth quiet because she valued your friendship and respected you as a human being. She clearly doesn't. Anyone who pulls that is simply showing their true selfish side, and they don't care about anyone else involved. You would do well to cut ties and move on. She'll be a thorn in yours and your relationship side. And trust me, since she's your friend, she's yours to manage when it comes to you and your boyfriend. And if it's looking like he's the one for you, you need to protect what you have with him. 
It's okay to cut people out of your life, Obi. It's very okay. Toxic people are poison to relationships they interact with. Good luck and be well. Edit. I'm hesitant to share the events of what happened. While well, I can't stand that witch. I'm hesitant because other folks are involved. Let's just say the most egregious thing she did, among other things she did those five days, was accuse my husband's friend of criminal behavior, all while flirting with him. And I'll leave it at that. I, of course, no longer believe her and now see this as a lie. But she put me and my husband in a horrible situation, falsely claimed a man of a crime and was a freaking creep in the room. She's out of our lives now, and I'm going to leave it at that. Now for the last story. Update. My girlfriend 19 female wants me 19 male to stop editing videos for female clients. Original post. My brother is an influencer. He also has a ton of friends who is in that business. I edit videos for him and a few of his friends. It is not a full-time gig and I don't make a ton of money, but it is fun and I enjoy working with them. By now, I have a very good relationship with them and can interpret their wants and vision correctly, so I rarely have to make major changes to my drafts. It is a pretty good gig while in college as it helps me relax. A girlfriend of six months recently came over while I was working and saw that some of the shots featured women's style and clothes. Yesterday, she called me and told me that she felt uncomfortable with me working with female clients if I was editing videos like that. I refused. And she said that I was being a creep who wouldn't get a real job, which was pretty hurtful. She isn't like this usually. I don't understand what I should do here. I like my clients. They are very chill people who don't make a lot of demands. I think I should dismiss her feelings. Now for the top advice before reading the update. She's wrong. She is wrong to limit who you can and can't have contact with, especially in a professional manner. She is wrong that it isn't a real job. Editing videos can be a career. This is your time to get experience, practice, make connections, build a portfolio and earn references. Sure, she can't express her discomfort, but she has no right to tell you to stop working with any clients based on gender. Imagine if you were bi or pansexual, what job would she allow you to have then? Personally, I wouldn't want to feature with someone like her. You are absolutely right. Opie also has to explain to her that his relationship with these girls is purely professional and he has no interest in them outside of that. And if she can't accept that, then Opie should reconsider their relationship. You should drop your girlfriend. Instead of having a mature conversation with you about how she's feeling insecure, she insults you. You're six months in. Cut your losses and end it. No idea what her idea of a real job is, but you sound like an entrepreneur to me. This is skilled work where you are building skills at a network. It's hard to get work like that when you're 19, and you're ahead of most college guys. She's an idiot. Moreover, the whole don't work with women part of it is stupid. This being relationship advice, I'm sure this isn't the stupidest thing to be jealous for that someone has posted about recently, let alone ever, but it's still a really stupid thing to be jealous about. It's not like it would be a problem if you were taking the videos since they're not adult films or anything, but it's not like you were even taking the videos physically around these women. And now for the update. I should have listened to the subreddit. I knew I had to break up with her, but I was too much of a coward to do it quickly, and now she destroyed my editing setup. It really messed me up, but on the plus side, her dad paid me enough money that I could buy a great setup. I was pretty scared for a while and stopped accepting jobs. One of my clients called me up to check if I'm okay, and we ended up having long conversations and haven't stopped talking since that day. We started dating about two months ago. She also has a similar experience with a jealous ex, who hated that she was an influencer. This relationship feels way more solid and open than the last one. We are doing great, and I'm seriously considering making a career being an editor, but that seems a bit scary. I love self-fulfilling prophecies. She was scared you'd leave her for a client, and literally did everything in her power to drive you straight into one. In the future, she'll tell future boyfriends how she has trust issues, because her last boyfriend left her for a client, conveniently leaving out that she was a bad crap petulant rage monster. You know what they say, you're the villain in someone else's story. So hey, if you'd taken the advice at a time, you might not be with your awesome new girlfriend. Anyway, sounds like it all worked out great and you were getting some sweet new equipment. 
reminded me of this fable that kind of changed my outlook in life. There was once a farmer who owned a horse and had a son. One day his horse ran away. The neighbors came to express their concern. Oh, that's too bad. How are you going to work the fields now? The farmer replied, good thing, bad thing, who knows? In a few days, his horse came back and brought another horse. Now the neighbors were glad. Oh, how lucky. Now he can do twice as much work as before. The farmer replied, good thing, bad thing, who knows? The next day, the farmer's son fell off the new horse and broke his leg. The neighbors were concerned again. Now that he is incapacitated, he can't help you. You might starve. That is too bad. The farmer replied, good thing, bad thing, who knows? Soon the news came that a war broke out, and all the young men were required to join the army. The villagers were sad because they knew that many of the young men will not come back. The farmer thought could not be drafted because of his broken leg. His neighbors were envious. How lucky. Get to keep your only son. The farmer replied, good thing, bad thing, who knows? There were so many bad things that happened to me that became good things and vice versa. Just what your ex was worried about happened. Not really. She called him a creep and said he couldn't get a real job. Then she mistreated him and broke his work gear. Then he obviously broke up with her because of it. Then he got over her. Then he met someone nice. Then he started dating them. His previous post was almost five months ago. He's been dating a new girl for two months. He's 19. Even if he waited a week before moving on, that's a lifetime in college. He didn't leave her for a client at all.